مرحبا بكم مشاهدينا في حوارات السياق مع تداعيات جائحة الكورونا وبقى أكثر من 4 مليار شخص حول العالم في منازلهم لفترات طويلة انخفض الطلب على البنزين ووقود الطائرات ومنتجات بترولية أخرى وبالتالي شهدت أسعار النفط تراجعا كبيرا ترنحت اقتصادات دول كثيرة تعتمد على النفط وتهاوت شركات عاملة في القطاع لتخفيف هذه التأثيرات قامت الدول المصدرة للنفط على رأسها أوبك بخفض الإنتاج بكميات غير مسبوقة خلال العام الماضي مع هذه الصعوبات التي واجهت صناعة النفط بشكل عام توجهت الأنظار إلى المملكة العربية السعودية أكبر دولة مصدرة للنفط في العالم بحثا عن حلول ولمناقشة هذا الملف والتحديات والفرص التي تمثلها جائحة كورونا لمنتجي ومصدري النفط ودور السعودية في التعامل مع هذه المتغيرات يسعدنا استضافة المهند الهشبول الباحث في شؤون الطاقة مرحبا بك المهند معنا يرى بعض المحللين أن تراجع الأسعار سيخرج عددا كبيرا من منتجي النفط الصخري من السوق لتصبح السعودية الفائز الأكبر ما رأيك؟ Well, these analyses were early sentiments uh, back in 2020 when the oil market crashed, and uh, they were based on um, what they saw as an outcome. A lot of analysts uh, expected when the oil market would crash that Saudi Arabia would basically struggle so much. Well, what they failed to uh, account for in their analysis is all the economic uh, reforms that have been uh, implemented Uh, since 2016, this vision of uh, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. So there were a lot of economic reforms that really helped Saudi Arabia uh, weather the storm of the oil market crash. And yes, eventually, uh, it turns out that they were the least harmed. However, Saudi Arabia, just like all other countries, has basically felt the uh, wrath of the oil market crash. And they have also... Uh, went through uh, um, challenges facing, facing them. So yes, I would say they have come out of the oil market crash as uh, the winners. However, they will, let's say that they, they weathered the storm the best out of uh, all the other countries. هل تتوقع أن تحاول إدارة بايدن إقناع السعودية لتمديد أو زيادة خفض الإمدادات مثل ما فعل ترامب العام الماضي؟ Well, What people need to understand it was uh, is what Pr President Trump did uh, last year of uh, asking Saudi Arabia and the rest of OPEC plus producers to cut oil production. That was the first time a U.S. administration for over 30 years asked Saudi Arabia or any of their allies to cut production. Usually what happens is they ask the other way. They usually ask for their allies to increase production. Why? Because they usually um, prefer oil prices be relatively low because that will affect the taxpayer back in the United States because with increasing oil prices, the gasoline goes up and everything goes up in terms of uh, consumer. And so that was an anomaly. I do not think that the Biden administration would ask uh, Saudi Arabia or the other OPEC members to uh, do any additional cuts. I would think that they will go back to their normal behavior of actually preferring a lower price range of oil prices which will basically be preferable for the US taxpayer. مؤخرا صدرت اوامر تنفيذيه بحظر منح تراخيص جديده لانشطه الاستكشاف والتنقيب في امريكا ما يعيق قدرتها على زياده الانتاج مستقبلا. ما تاثير ذلك على دور السعوديه في سوق النفط؟ The Biden administration, all these executive orders with the, you know, the suspension of phase four, the Keystone pipeline, Uh, project and also uh, re uh, basically not issuing any new permits for drilling on federal land. But what things need, what people need to understand is uh, all the current uh, drilling licenses are in effect. So they will, it will not really affect on the short term for the US production. However, on the medium to long term, yes, if, if these policies continue, they will affect the US production and therefore there will be some sort of deficit. Now, we have seen in the past uh, year we have, that the U.S. has become, for the first time, I think in my, in my memory at least, uh, a net exporter. 
Now, if they, their production goes down, they will go back to being more dependent on importing oil. Will they be influenced by Saudi Arabia? Not really. They have their own kind of energy policies that they would like to go through. However, Saudi Arabia's um, strength and effect that and, and influence that it could have on the market will be in their minds, as in they will think about it, that what will things would happen, especially about what happened last year and the way Saudi Arabia handled the oil market. So I don't think it would be influencing the Saudi, the U.S. Uh, oil policies. However, it will be considered. في اجتماع يناير 2021 قررت اوبيك بلاس زيادة طفيفة في الانتاج واعلنت السعودية خفض انتاجها مجددا بمقدار مليون برميل يوميا في فبراير ومارس لماذا تقوم الرياض بذلك؟ Here's how Saudi Arabia looks at it and this is something that is not new this has been this has been a historic trend of how Saudi Arabia uh, approaches the oil market oil stabilization is key so what Saudi Arabia is trying to do is go after the oil inventories. They have reached record numbers back in 2020 due to the uh, uh, demand crash of the oil uh, market. So we have accumulated a large amount of oil stocks, uh, stockpiles, actually inventories. So Saudi Arabia's aim is to go after these inventories and take advantage of what's happening right now. Therefore, they went and implemented these additional voluntary cuts of 1 million barrels per day for two months. So if you multiply that by two months, that's 60 million barrels, actually even more, if you consider the rest of the cuts that has been made, 60 million barrels uh, will be removed from the supply of the market. That will help the inventories go down. And also when inventories go down, that will give a good boost and fundamentals uh, and the fundamentals of the market, which will help prices go up and stabilize at a specific range. So that's why Saudi Arabia did that. And they can afford it right now because of seasonalities. Their, de their local demand uh, has gone down. They can basically uh, look at it and see that they can afford to also <laughs> help. <laughs> well, of course, yes. Uh, it, Saudi Arabia is still more dependent on uh, on their uh, oil revenue. However, um, all these economic reforms that we talked about earlier really helped Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, diversify their income. We saw back in 2020, if I'm not mistaken, in Q3, when the uh, uh, finance ministry announced that the uh, the, uh, the revenue for Saudi Arabia, we saw that non-oil income for the first time ever was higher than oil revenue income. So that gives you an idea of that all these economic reforms and ch changes, some of them, of, of course, are uh, due to uh, the institution of value added tax and all of that help Saudi Arabia maintain and, uh, uh, and, and, and maintain a good economic position and they can take a less dependent approach to the oil market uh, and all the, all the, all the, uh, and the oil revenue. So that will be, they will be affected, but not that much. And also when you reduce your, let's say, uh, supply and your uh, um, exports with uh, increasing the price of the barrel, that also makes up for the, uh, the amount of uh, shortage you do in, in your exports. I think, yes, yeah, God willing, no, but I do not think so that that will happen uh, anytime soon. Uh, this whole price war, or in my opinion, or let's say more accurately, is more of a market share war. This was, let's say, I would say it was brewing for a while. Uh, uh, the Russians, since they joined uh, OPEC Plus Alliance, which they signed in the late, late 2016, but went into effect early 2017, um, the Russians uh, have seen the U.S. Uh, production numbers basically overtake both the Saudis and the Russians to become, the US became the number one producer of oil in the world. That did not sit well with the Russians. And I think 
when uh, the um, coronavirus uh, pandemic issue hit the market, I think they saw that as an opportunity, the Russians I'm talking right now, as to you know, put a strength hold on the shale industry where they can go back and take control. However, I also believe they underestimated, just like all the other analysts along with the Russians, the ability of Saudi Arabia to take uh, the storm of this hit of this market. And as well, uh, a lot of people were very skeptical, I'm assuming the Russians as well, of the ability of Saudi Arabia to increase their production. So uh, the 12 million barrels per day that Saudi Arabia uh, implement uh, production that implemented back in April, a lot of people for many years were uh, very skeptical of Saudi Arabia's ability to achieve that and they were able to do it. So that gave a sign that, okay, we all need to be in this together. And I think also the Russians bought into what the Saudis are trying to implement, which is the stability of the oil market and long-term plans more than short-term gains. شكرا لك المهند الهجبول الباحث في شؤون الطاقه على مشاركتك معنا